In this war, if you pick wrong, you might really need a red redemption. I'm Katherine Futch. Welcome back to GC360, where we bring you news from the Georgia College campus and across the Milledgeville community. With the holiday season finally here, we are seeing an increase in more than just Christmas cheer. COVID numbers are rapidly rising all throughout the state. Although we can see the number going up, many are confused on what it actually means. GC360's Ava Leon reports. Before the break, GC provided on-campus testing for students through an initiative called Go Home Healthy, Know Your Status. Fine Arts studio major Abby Smith got tested. My grandparents, they're both in their like early 80s, and so I don't didn't want to like risk it at all. I think everybody should get it done just to know like if they're positive or negative, even if you don't have any symptoms. The CDC reported that Baldwin County experienced 43 cases and fewer than 10 deaths over the past week. The county has experienced about a 2.16 percent increase in positive tests. Johns Hopkins reported in August that 5% is the threshold for positivity being, quote, too high. Earlier this year, Baldwin was considered a hot spot for the virus, and while they are currently keeping cases under wraps, Dr. Amber Schmidtke, author of the newsletter Georgia COVID-19 Update, says we shouldn't let this fool us. What we're worried about right now is that we've had sort of a, a, a big increase, it may even be a surge, um, and now we have this false bottom uh, and we're going to see a big uptick in the next couple days as those samples are processed. Over Thanksgiving week, the CDC reported just over a million new cases. Dr. Schmidtke reminds her followers that there is hope in the near future as scientists continue to create a working vaccine to mitigate the virus. It's important to recognize that it's not all bad news right now, right? We've got a vaccine that's on the way. It's just around the corner. Um, and, but what we need to do in the meantime is kind of buckle down and uh, preserve as much hospital capacity in particular as we can, but also just limit transmission as much as we can. According to forecasting trends, the CDC predicts that there will be an increase of around 500,000 cases within the next month. Schmidtke said as the virus becomes more intense, hospitals will become even more pressed for PPE, or personal protective equipment. With the pandemic in full force, officials are still warning citizens to be careful during the upcoming holidays. The United States is in kind of a, a dangerous situation right now. Uh, we have widespread community transmission um, that's happening not just on a regional scale, like we saw in Georgia in the summer, it's happening nationwide. Officials say we all should take extra precautions during the break as the number of cases is expected to rise. Stay safe and stay aware. Reporting for GC360, this is Ava Leone. When students returned from the summer break, COVID cases were rapidly increasing, but over time we saw the official curve at Georgia College flatten tremendously. But one Georgia College graduate student believes there's more to the story than what we see. Georgia College MFA student Denisha Powell wants to know more about the toll that COVID-19 is taking on students and university employees. Powell is the co-chair of the Georgia College chapter of United Campus Workers of Georgia. The group created a survey for students and employees diagnosed with COVID in 2020. Powell says the survey is designed to get behind the numbers in a safe, confidential way and learn more than the case numbers alone reveal. The survey asks questions regarding physical and mental effects that COVID-19 patients experienced. The survey also asks what type of help the school offers to students and faculty who have contracted COVID. We're very curious to know uh, what kind of effects people um, are having once they do contract COVID-19? What are their experiences like? Um, are they getting support from the school? Do they, ha do they have enough support, period? Um, we wanted to know more about what um, folks' experiences have been um, because we want, we want information that we can advocate with. Powell proposed the idea of a mandatory COVID test before returning to campus for the spring semester. This would help ensure students and faculty health and safety after the holidays. 
and um, we would like there to be some mechanism in place to make sure that students are COVID-19 negative once they come um, back on campus or that, you know, they're able to take a test before they come back so they can, you know, you can do what they need to do before starting classes again. Powell says the health of students and faculty on campus is important to the United Campus Workers of Georgia. They encourage students, faculty members, and staff who have been diagnosed with COVID during the school year to take the survey. Make sure to stay safe and have a healthy holiday season. For GC360, this is Gabriella Spazzato. So they say it's a man's world? Well, I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were out doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. We changed all that! Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. I grew up in the housing projects of Cleveland. I didn't even know that life could be any better than it was. Education for me has been a way to get away from the agony of what was normal life. I want to be able to impact the community, not just look back on where I came from, but to reach back to where I came from and pull some people up with me. My name is David, and I am your dividend. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 68 children is diagnosed with autism. That's about a 30% increase in two years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Are you worried that over the extended break you'll have nothing to do? Many departments around Georgia College have come together to offer programming while we're away. GC360's Adrian Duke has that story. Winter break looks different for everyone this year. Students will have over a month to spend back home. During this time, Georgia College has created activities for students to stay connected and engaged. Adopt a Stream is one of the programs Associate Professor of Environmental Science Allison Vandervoort says the program works in conjunction with GC Journeys. So students are actively, I think actually right now, um, completing adopt a Stream certifications. Um, and so once they have that, then they're going to be able to go back to their home watersheds and collect meaningful data. Um, that'll help the water quality monitoring system that's our statewide adopt stream program here in Georgia. Director of Parent and Family Programs, Emily Jarvis, wanted to provide a way for students to still feel connected while being away by providing programs for students to get involved with. A few of the examples, there's a four-week mindfulness class that students can sign up for. And when we say class, it's not for credit, it's really just a cohort of students who together will be learning mindfulness and meditation skills, which is so useful throughout the year when you're in classes and things are stressful and just in day-to-day -day life to know how to center yourself and you know be mindful of the world around you. So that's one example. Um, Counseling Services is also offering a series of healthy relationship workshops um, and students can opt in to one or all of those sessions and it just teaches you know the hallmarks of a healthy relationship, what to look out for for unhealthy relationships and how to be a good partner. Um, so it's just kind of some personal development and then we'll also have live events, um, just kind of one-off things that students can pop into for an hour, so it's not a huge time commitment. Um, one of those actually that I'm presenting with the Career Center is pro tips for professional travel. So when we're able to travel again, hopefully soon, um, just some tips about when you go to conferences as a professional, how do you pack, how do you network, what should you expect, and then nitty gritty things like how do you pay for it and what do you do with your company's you know, accounting office, what should you expect, 
um, as a professional who's traveling for business. Georgia College has done a great job by offering multiple activities for students to get involved with over this break. With GC360, I'm Addie Duke. Two Georgia College alums took their old WGUR radio show and transformed it into so much more. Grab your teacups and get ready for tea time. GC360's Maddie Holtz reports. My name is Cedric Norris Jr. Um, I graduated from Georgia College in 2019. And then of course, my name is Jack Fitzgerald. I also graduated from Georgia College in 2018. Hey, hey, hey guys. We are back with another episode with Tea Time with Cedric. And Jai. <laughs> we started at Georgia College and then I think it was just a very off the wall idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like we were like, we could, why don't we just do exactly, a radio show? Exactly. Exactly. And spill the tea. We and, love yeah. messy drama, yeah. celebrity stuff. Yeah. And um, after Georgia College, of course, we graduated. Mm -hmm. And then um, it wasn't until this year we were like, mm -hmm. eh, we should bring it back. But as yeah. a podcast. Yeah. So it's a good one. So we named it with tea. We named it Tea Time because we were always spilling the tea. Always around each other because it's college. I mean, you have your group of friends and you maintain that. But then once you get into the adult world and you're not either seeing those people as much um, you're not talking to them as much, you know, happy birthday, celebrations, you're getting together this and third. That's when you really find out who your real friends, your good friends are, and your toxic friends. We are going to be a podcast that, like, keeps it real. Exactly. And honestly. Instead of yeah. keeping it real, we're spilling the tea. Exactly. Yeah. Tea Time with Cedric and Jai is live every Thursday. From talking about celebrity drama to mental health, their goal is to help people in their 20s navigate through life. Main, like theme throughout the podcast is us right. kind of talking about life in our 20s like how to navigate through that um relationships friendships politics yeah mental sexuality, health, mental yeah. health. I especially mean, after everything that comes with it yeah, yeah. especially after college because yes. like we stated on our show post-grad depression is real and we kind of just wanted to share about some of the experiences that we went through after graduating and just kind of help other people who may be going through the same thing or they're about to go through the same thing mm -hmm. cedric and jai have created a platform for young adults to talk about life and have people relate kind of like give people in our area of life like mm -hmm. in our age range of uh, a way a, so a place to come to kind of just like laugh and exactly release um but to also come and have important conversations that are so they need to be had yeah yeah exactly yeah us. and i think it's also really great because we can motivate people like i know there's a lot of people who may want to start a podcast and mm -hmm. they don't know where to start or maybe there's people that are struggling with the topics that we're talking about it's never too late to do better so much of growing is about changing the way you think about things. Yes. Sometimes you just have to rest. The world can wait. Yes. That was perfect. And that's where we're going to leave it. Exactly. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Catch us next week. Yes, as always. Thank you so much. Supporting us, loving us, laughing with us, crying with us. Tea Time with Cedric and Jai is live on Facebook every Thursday at 8. You can find the recordings of their show on Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Find them on Facebook and Instagram. For GC360, I'm Maddie Holtz. When it comes to video games, it's obvious who is the real king of consoles, right? The answer may not be near, but find out what all the fuss is about when we return. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be.
get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. The Baldwin Braves tackled a lot this season, including playing during a pandemic. The Braves have officially closed out their regular season. Losing only one game, the Braves now head to the playoffs. GC360's Joel White reports. The Baldwin High School Braves football team is preparing to take on the Carver Tigers in the second round of the GHSA football tournament after defeating the Thomas County Central Yellow Jackets on Saturday. But head coach Jesse Hicks says that this season has been about more than just football. Our ultimate goal as stewards over young people is to make sure that they're safe. But at the end of the day, their ultimate safety and the betterment of them is more important than playing a football game. One player on the team, a wide receiver by the name of Javon Bullard, showed that he can play well even with worry and doubts surrounding each game, as he recently committed to play for the University of Georgia next season. While Coach Hicks said he is happy for Bullard, he made it clear that goes for any of his players that play for college football, not just the ones that end up on a Division I team. I'm happy if they sign and play at Tata University. That, uh, you know, I, what I want to do is help these kids turn the next page in their life, if it, even if it's not football. While some players may be looking forward to playing in college, they'll first have to focus on their next playoff game against the undefeated Carver Tigers on Friday night in the hopes of advancing to the next round. For GC360, I'm Joel White. Have you ever imagined being a viral internet sensation? Well, one Georgia college student recently found fame on the popular app TikTok, and for a very interesting reason. Alyssa Fury, a British student at Georgia College, posted a video to the social media site TikTok about the lessons she's learned while going to school in the U.S. So I go to a college in Georgia. I'm English and I have a little list of things that I've learned while going to college here. But little did she know that that video would go viral. I always joked about like, oh, it'd be really funny, it'd be funny, it went viral. And like, I was just really bored. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to post one. And for like, Three hours, there was like 10 views on it. And then like, I was like sitting on our couch and I was like, wait, like I just got like 300 likes. You don't actually start your college major till your junior year. I'm a business major taking environmental science. In the South, the word y'all use way too much. Everyone goes to Florida for spring break, regardless of where you live. I have to order an American accent. When I want a water, I have to get a water because no one understands what I want. The video has reached 1 million views with around 150k likes. They always, the first question they ask me is, oh my God, why did you leave? Like, why would you come here? Like, they don't understand why people would want to go to different countries. TikTokers went to the video's comments with questions and in many cases, jokes about why Alyssa would want to leave the UK. And a few people in my DMs um, being like, go home. That was a, that's a nice comment, like, uh, go home. <laughs> People from Georgia are like, oh, it's so fun, but people not from Georgia are like, why would you go to Georgia? And so, like, people would just argue about that. Since the video has been uploaded, many articles have been published about Alyssa, from Yahoo News to Daily Mail. You can find the viral video on Alyssa's TikTok, at Alyssa Fury. For GC360, I'm Maddie Holtz. This fight might be even more tense than the past presidential election. Choosing may be hard, but it's our call of duty to do so. GC360's Isabella Bruin reports. For the parents, friends, girlfriends, and boyfriends of gamers, you may consider buying your gamer an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5 during this time of pre-Christmas shopping. As many gamers know, the Xbox Series X released last Tuesday, November 10th, and the PlayStation 5 released shortly after on November 12th. Both consoles offer backwards compatibility, faster download and loading speed, as well as 4K resolution. To get first-hand feedback on the faults and benefits of the newest generation of PlayStation, I spoke with James Austin. There's this new haptic feedback in the controllers that really makes the gaming more immersive. 
and the games just in general look really good on like a, a 4K TV. Uh, I've had the console crash once, but other than that, it's been pretty a pretty smooth experience. Enzo Cervantes, another owner of the new PS5, has more information on his immersive experience. Now they just have HD rumble and the adaptive triggers. And so when you play Astro's Playroom, you'll be walking on sand and it feels like you're walking on sand. Or you'll be walking on concrete and you very clearly know it's concrete. Or you'll be controlling a rocket and the triggers are literally just vibrating like crazy. The shape of the PlayStation and Xbox consoles has evolved over time. Clem Bell III, also known as Admiral Slim, is a proud owner of the Xbox Series X despite internet roasts on the Xbox Series X appearance. Definitely a proud owner of the Xbox Series X. Yeah, so there's been some pretty fun roasts out there. This looks like the mini trash can you have in your kitchen, the little nightstand, like a round glass. This could be like a mini nightstand or a mini table. I've seen that. There's the mini fridge. Xbox, their marketing team is phenomenal. They really leaned into the memes so much that they have made two or three actual like full-size fridges that are modeled after the Series X. When you open the door, the light comes on, the X comes on, and it makes the sound as if you had the console. They even sent one to Snoop Dogg. Now it doesn't play games, but it's modeled after the fridge. The factors behind gamers' platform preferences vary. Some gamers, like David Shaw, prioritize brand loyalty. Uh, I would consider myself, I guess, more loyal to Xbox. I like their business plan that they have set out in the future, mainly trying to just get as many games to as many people as possible amongst multiple platforms through PC and Xbox which is something I really like. Similarly, gamer Kelvin Gonzalez, also known by his PSN, Kelvman, has committed to the PlayStation brand. Yeah, so I've had a PlayStation for most of my life, beginning from PlayStation 1, then the PS2, then a PS3, and currently a PS4. I've never had any problems with the system, and quite frankly, more exclusive games have been put on the PlayStation market. Well, Xbox has been suffering because there's not really any unique exclusive games on that system. They're mostly on, like, PlayStation. Also, as each generation keeps on going, the graphics are going to get better and the performance is going to get better. PC will always be ahead because it's literally a computer. The makers, such as Sony and Microsoft, they're going to have to start thinking about are they going to sacrifice performance for cost or are they going to sacrifice cost for performance? The future of gaming is ever-changing. There will always be a battle between personal preference of PlayStation, Xbox, or PC. As the consoles evolve and upgrade, Sony, the parent company of PlayStation, and Microsoft, the owner of Xbox, will compete with the high-quality graphics of personal computers, also known as PCs. I'm Isabella Bruin with GC360. Thanks for watching. Do you need a lift during these trying times? Then Voices of Joy has a treat for you. Lifting the community in worship and praise and harmonizing along the way, GC360's Madison McNew reports. This past semester was a fresh beginning for the Gospel Choir Voices of Joy. They worked hard to reach out to other students and organize a wonderful group of singers. Tori Harris, the music director, explained how they acquired their members after taking a short break from performing. It was a little because working with schedules and then COVID, being a new organization on campus, having to, you know, slip into other people's schedules was a little hard. And then we have to think about social distancing and wearing masks. And so through all of that, it was just really cool that we still had the commitment that we were seeing with the group. Even in the midst of a pandemic, this gospel choir was able to bring a glimpse of hope to their audience. The president of Voices of Joy, Ansley Montgomery, shared her passion behind keeping their choir going even in these trying times. Praise God in the midst of it. Um, and just bring joy, huh? Voices of joy. <laughs> <laughs> bring joy to the campus and have kind of an outlet for people to just um, be able to sing freely and to praise God and to be around others who kind of like are on the same wavelength as you. Tori, Ansley, and the rest of the choir work to shine a glimmer of light on a seemingly dark time here on campus. For GC360, I'm Madison McNew. You don't want to forget to leave Santa a sweet treat. Learn how to make the best Christmas cookies around when we return.
sun Tell him that I've begun To dream of things Of things to come And tell the trees Not to look for me I'm going to find some Peace of mind Sun. Wake the sun, wake the sun, wake the sun. Welcome back, Bobcats. My name is C. Hearn, here to give you one last weather update before our winter break. As expected, it's going to be mighty cold. The highs for the rest of the week will be around 60 degrees with the lows in the mid 30s. So grab those hats, sweatshirts, and coats. You're going to need them. There's a small chance of rain for the next few days, but it should stay partly cloudy for the majority of the weekend. For the rest of December, the highs will average in the 60s and the low is predicted to hit 34. We have a slim chance of snow in the next coming weeks. It's not looking like it will get cold enough here in Milledgeville for any flurries in December. However, January could be a different story. The high for the month is predicted to stay around 57, while the low is forecast at 32 degrees. Yes, 32 degrees, which means we've got a chance to see some snowfall. Overall, this winter should be mild compared to some Georgia has seen in the past, so you won't need to be busting out your ski gear to keep warm. That's all I have for weather this week. Have a safe and much deserved break, Bobcats. Due to spring break being canceled, Students are looking at an extended winter break, but is this really a fair trade? And what risk does it bring to our small community? GC360's Jacob Sheely reports. As the fall semester comes to a close, the fear of COVID exposure is running rampant. Cases in Georgia have continued to rise, with the last reported number reaching over 400,000. This is especially alarming considering that the virus has taken over 8,000 lives in Georgia alone. In order to combat these fears, Georgia College has set up free on-campus testing as part of their Go Home Healthy Know Your Status campaign. Several students have expressed their fear of exposing family and loved ones at home. Donovan, a sophomore and physics major, expressed his concern over exposing COVID to loved ones. My stepdad does have like asthma and other stuff that like would make him a little more susceptible to like getting hurt from COVID. So. I know that when I do go home, I'm planning on like getting tested and staying like kind of away from him until I know that I don't have it and stuff. However, he also expressed his confidence in returning to school. I think I'm okay with coming back though. I think I, I'm comfortable here now because like, you know, I've been here for a while. So like, it's like my own personal little town that I feel okay in, I think. The coronavirus has not stopped students like Jack Lawrence, a junior and psychology major, from being excited about the break. I feel good about it. Um, I'm excited to go home and see my parents for about, I think it's almost a month and a half we get off. It's a long time, so I'm excited about that. Just excited to not have school really, just to, just to rest some and to try to get a job too, make some money, so that's exciting. So overall, I mean with COVID, I don't really know how to feel about it. I'm just kind of taking it as it goes, so we'll see what happens. Jack also elaborated on some of his plans for the break. Yeah, so I'm planning on working at Target with a friend. Um, and then I'm just hanging out kind of, probably going to go on a couple like weekend trips, things like that. And I'm, we're doing Thanksgiving at our house, with, uh, my parents and my brother, and then having Christmas at our house. Um, so it'll be fun, yeah. Director of Public Affairs Brittany Johnson explained how the university plans for COVID prevention during the spring semester. At this point, Georgia College does not plan to implement randomized testing of students or require a negative test to return to campus in January. Director Johnson also stated that the prevention methods implemented this year, such as the wearing of masks on and off campus, would continue into the spring semester. How will the university and country at large be affected by the virus over the holidays? For that answer, one can only wait and see. This is Jacob Sheely signing off. Wherever you are, do what's necessary to stay healthy, and we'll see you back on campus in late January. Now let's throw it back to Catherine at the desk.
The holidays may look different this year, but there is one tradition that many families can still look forward to. GC360's Megan Newsom demonstrates. Hi, I'm Megan Newsom for GC360, and today we're making Christmas cookies. I'm going head to head with Sally Skipper. Her and I are competing. Who can make the best Christmas cookie? So that's it. That's how you make some classic Christmas sugar cookies and I hope I've provided some good competition for Sally and I'm excited to see what she does. Once again, I'm Megan Newsom for g 360 and I hope you all have a happy holiday. This semester has been full of ups and downs. g 360 has been there every step of the way. Let's look back at the semester. g 360 Sophie Sheeve reports. Hello, Bob Katz. I'm so glad you're back on campus. I can see the smiles behind your mask, and I know that you're glad to be back here, too. This semester at GCSU has been unique. From the COVID-19 pandemic to the presidential election, it seemed like students had something new to worry about every week. COVID-19 had everyone on edge as students returned to campus. Each day, the number of cases on campus climbed higher and higher. The Deep Roots Festival was canceled. Not being able to have our community come together, uh, I think in the long term has more, does more damage to us than, than the loss of a day or a weekend of money. And eventually, so was spring break. I was hoping, I was really hoping that it was not true, but unfortunately it is. And I am going to have to get used to being in school at a time where I'm supposed to be at the beach. A die-in was held by the United Workers of Georgia GCSU chapter. They felt that the then-current policies put faculty, staff, and students at risk for COVID-19. So this was a part of a collective effort to bring attention to the, to the fact that um, we don't feel that um, we are getting enough protections against COVID-19. Um, it was symbolic of where we're headed if better pre protections are not put in place. COVID-19 also had an effect on Halloween in Milledgeville. What we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna follow all the, the CDC guidelines, uh, make sure they have their face covering, wash their hands, check the candy, and uh, social distancing. The presidential election was another big event. Students had to worry about deciding how they were gonna vote and getting their ballot in on time. If you can make sure that you drop it off at the actual, you know, sanctioned Board of Elections drop-off point, it's particularly good. That way you don't stress the postal system and you can also make sure that your ballot gets to the appropriate place. 
Joe Biden and running mate Kamala Harris have won the election. Kamala Harris is making history as the first female vice president-elect. I think watching a uh, female vice president on TV will um, just not put any like stigmas um, in like what they're limited to. Um, so I think that uh, they'll grow up in a world where um, women can be in power, and I think that's awesome. Among all of that, a new game called Among Us has become popular with children and young adults. The game itself is very basic, but with Among Us, it's been out for years. But it didn't really pick up in popularity until recently. During this stressful year, it's no wonder such a simple, fun game has gained popularity. Anyone can play from your group of friends to even Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. As the holidays roll around and this semester ends, we can't help looking to next semester and all the possibilities. Vaccines are looking more and more promising every day. The end of the pandemic could be on the horizon. For GC360, I'm Sophie Sheev. As we close out this week, enjoy the singing of GC's Gospel Choir, Voices of Joy. I'm Catherine Futch. And from the GC360 family to yours, happy holidays. Join us next semester for a new edition of GC360. When we're not on the air, we keep you up to date on our social media pages. Facebook.com slash GC360, at GC360 News on Twitter and Instagram. And on our YouTube page, YouTube.com slash GC360 News. Always available to you, GC360, where news comes full circle.